Fightful has learned that former Ring of Honor World Champion Jonathan Gresham has asked for his release from Ring of Honor. He asked for his release Saturday ahead of ROH Death Before Dishonor. This show did see him lose the World Championship. We're told that there was a lack of communication between the company and Gresham leading up to the weekend, and Gresham was said to have felt disrespected by this. Among other things, we learned that the lack of time for the world title match was a tipping point as well. Now, if you weren't aware, the world title match that actually went on first on the main card went 11 minutes and 30 seconds. That was actually, other than the six-man tag team match, that was the shortest match. It was a, so technically, it was the second shortest match on the main card. Your world title match, and it wasn't like it was a Claudio squash or anything. Your world title match was the second shortest match on the main card. And the one, two, three, fourth shortest match out of the 11 matches total on the entire night. That ain't good. That ain't good looking at all. Uh, Five says that they're told that Gresham finally uh, procured a meeting with Tony Khan before the show. And he was said to have communicated the frustration that led to him, quote, cussing out Khan. Several talent confirmed this to Fightful following ROH's death for dishonor. Gresham has had interest from Japan, Impact, and others before signing with ROH slash AEW. Gresham told Fightful late last year that he was going to stick around and stick things out and see what happens with the ROH. Excuse me, see what happens with the ROH brand. It was not confirmed if Gresham, if Gresham was actually granted his release or not, but they are told that he left the ring, or he left right after his match. Now, in an update to all of this, uh, Fightful states that they are told that Gresham met with Tony Khan and others at 4 p.m. Eastern before Death Before Dishonor and was admittedly heated and, well, not happy with the direction of the booking and his character. It was agreed upon that the context of the conversation would remain private and details originally didn't seem to emerge from anyone in the room. However, by the time the conversation was over, much of the locker room and staff could physically hear how it went down. Building security was even said to have overheard the conversation. Gresham had spoken to QT Marshall several times over the past week, albeit briefly, which we have heard went well. It was also noted that Sanjay Dunt was a point of contact. The frustration on Gresham's part seemed to be the direction of creative, which ultimately ends with Tony Khan and not being able to give answers as a result. Gresham was supportedly uh, told that those decisions had to be ran through, ran through Tony, who he wasn't able to meet with until hours before the show. The general preference is that talent speaks to one of the coaches who are then in contact with Khan. If the conversations are about booking, they have to be relayed to Tony Khan. The coaches pass on dozens of ideas, either for themselves or talent, to Khan, who is then in charge of making those ideas a reality or deciding if they don't fit. Those answers are then to be relayed back to the talent. For those asking about names involved in that, it's usually AW coaches, as well as Christopher Daniels, QT Marshall, Pat Buck. We're even told that Mega Parekh, who is in charge of like PR and stuff for WWE and legal, and Sanjay Dunn also help out, and Khan is in communication with them at least 10 times a day. Uh, there are also plenty of situations where Tony Khan has made efforts to talk directly to talent, although numerous have said that it's declined since the Daily's Place era due to the changing of the world and travel in general. Pull up, there's another link here with more information from Fightful as well. Um, Fightful states that it was said that, a, that the AEW side of things believed that Gresham came into the meeting with his mind made up and they'd not seen him heated like this before chalking it up to Gresham being passionate about his beliefs in ROH the brand and himself they felt as if there was a disconnect between the access to speak with people about their creative and it became perceived quote creative control Gresham was said to have a vision of his creative direction and where things should go with him. And it was different from what Tony Khan and ROH had planned for him. Specifically, we learned that Gresham wasn't in favor of turning heel, but that ROH believed that that was a, quote, bigger picture for that. 
were told that the finish had been at least hinted to Gresham, but no word on it if he knew before Saturday or not. In the past, several former AEW talent have spoken out about the lack of communication within talent relations being a point of frustration for them within AEW. Joey Janela once confirmed to Fightful that he hadn't reached out to AEW coaches prior to his exit. Marco Stunt had emailed AEW in an official capacity, but we haven't heard about follow-ups to coaches themselves on this part. So there's a lot of confusion here. You know, they were like, we want you to be a heel. We want you to do this. We're going to take the title off of you. And I don't know if he had a... No one has said that Gresham has had an issue with dropping the championship to to um, Claudio Castagnoli. But here in the Fightful report, and I think Meltzer may have even stated as well, one of the things that Gresham didn't want to do was turn heel. He didn't want to be in a faction and be under somebody like he was with, you know, Tully Blanchard Enterprises and now the embassy with Prince Nana and all that. That was something that had been reiterated over the weekend a few times that Jonathan Gresham did not want to be a heel and have to do this kind of stuff. Because, I mean, if you watch Jonathan Gresham anywhere outside of Ring of Honor and AEW, he's a great white meat baby, white meat, white meat baby face, as they would say. Somebody that the fans can really get behind. Somebody that the fans can really like. And you know what his intentions always are. He's the kind of guy that's going to go out there, want to put on a great technical match, and want to have one of the best matches of the night with whoever his opponent is. But now having to change him to a heel, something that he believed he shouldn't be doing right now, could that also change the way he would have to act in other companies? Whether that is him working terminants, or if he goes out and does a GCW show. That's the thing. When you're working for one of these bigger companies, and you get changed, your character gets changed, whether that is just a straight-up character change or it's just heal the baby, baby to heal. And now you've got to play that up. You're now a heel. Do you have to play that up other places? That's the big question. And it seems like that could have been something he didn't want to have to do. He didn't want to turn heel. He didn't want it to ruin, maybe, I'm just spitballing. He didn't want it to ruin what he would have to do in other capacities outside of Ring of Honor. So we'll see where this all leads to. As of this morning, as of this afternoon, it's roughly noon Pacific here in California on a Monday. We haven't heard if Jonathan Gresham has gotten his release or not from ROH slash AEW. 